Arsenal crash out of the Europa League in a 0-0 draw with Villarreal. Man United lose on the night, but make it through to their second Europa League final in the last four seasons. We're here. We're live. We're going to take your calls. Hit the like and share button. Let's go, people. Arsenal out, nil-nil draw. They hit the post. They missed some gilt-edged chances, but they crash out of the Europa League in the semi-final. It's a very, very bad evening. A bad evening for Arsenal. A better one for Manchester United. They may have lost on the night, but they go through to the final in just under three weeks' time. Before we go any further, let's hit that like button. Let's hit that share button. Whether you're watching on Give Me Sports Facebook page or you're watching here on the Football Terrace live on YouTube, hit it right about now. Uh, Pav here with the Super Chat straight away. He says, good evening, Arsenal fans. Enjoy the Conference League. And that is where they are going. You've got Tyler here over on Give Me Sport Facebook. Says, Obama Yang should have been subbed. I don't care how long was left. Never stick Eddie on that pitch. Should not, shouldn't have been subbed. Never stick Eddie on the pitch. We are our own downfall every time. Time to change um, with this club starting with the Cronkies. Then this manager, Tyler, is not happy at all right now. He really, really isn't. Man like Jesse here with a super chat says, well, people, there's a first thing for, for everything. It's like seeing Emery celebrate at the Emirates. Beautiful scenes. Man United didn't show up, but whatever, we are through. And listen, Man United, it, it was a really... We'll, we will touch on Man United a little bit later on in the show. They're not going to be the main focus tonight because, of course, Arsenal crashed out. But it there was just a lackadaisical approach, wasn't there, from Man United at times, through comfortably sleeping half the game. Not good to lose, but... I don't think there's going to be anyone worrying or, or panicking over that. Whenever we needed to turn up at any point in this semi-final, we did and got the job done. Arsenal, on the other hand, they are out. No chance of salvaging the season. No chance of redemption. And we're going to be hearing from you. We're going to be taking your calls live on the air. If you're new to us over on Give Me Sport with a Football Terrace, come check us out on YouTube when you're done. I'm um, over there on Facebook just for search the Football Terrace. You'll find us no problem. We're on nearly 200,000 subscribers over here now. We'll share the StreamYard link for you to phone in and have your say very, very soon. Samuel here says, um, Terry, the way I was enjoying um, that intro today, Gunners have no ammunition. Arsenal, the gift that keeps on giving. Thank you. Arsenal are definitely getting bantered today. I don't think they can do anything to stop that. We have a comment here. This is can't believe this meme team believed London was red. Dinesh says, evening, Terry. Arsenal losing. Does fifth place go into the Champions League? No, that, that does not happen. The only way a fifth place team get in the Champions League is if it was Man United or Chelsea or City and they won the trophy. But the fifth place team cannot get into the Champions League. That is a foregone conclusion. That is a foregone conclusion. We're going to have a little competition while we're live, by the way. Who can get the most likes tonight? The Facebook crowd or the YouTube crowd? YouTube currently on 358. Facebook, you're behind right now on just 82. Can you catch up with the YouTube crew? And YouTube, can you stay in front of Facebook? Uh, let's have a little competition amongst yourselves tonight. Josh here, who I know is a Spurs fan, says that's the worst semi-final in any competition I've ever watched um, if either of those teams made the Champions League, it would be a disaster. Another year below Spurs, Egal. Man like Josh is celebrating, seeing Arsenal go out. And we will digest it. We will talk to, talk to the Gooners very soon. Just Football said, Arsenal relegated from Europe. Glory, glory, Man United. Bread Knobs and Broomsticks says, good evening. I think Arsenal fans are going to hear a lot of good evening jokes in the next few days. Uh, Dev here says, what did Egal say? Arsenal will defeat United in the final. They're not in the final. That cannot happen. James here says, absolutely disgraceful, dreadful, pragmatic, scared mentality. The manager is out of his depth and the board has dragged the whole club in the mud. 
James Craig is fuming. Arsenal fans, how are you feeling right now? Is this on the club? Is it on the manager, the players, or a combination of all three? We want to hear from you tonight. StreamYard link's coming out soon for you to come on and have your say. For you to have your say. Share this stream as well, ladies and gentlemen. If you're watching on Facebook, share it on your timeline. Get your friends, get your family, get your football community involved. If you're watching it on YouTube, same thing again. Share this on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram. Let's get people involved right about now, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get that done. Daniel here says, pretty sure fifth place can get in. No, they like if Chelsea get fifth and win the Champions League, that isn't fifth place in. The top four or top four, that's them as being Champions League winners. If you finish fifth, you only get in if you win the cup. So that isn't fifth place getting in. I hear what you're saying, but it isn't fifth place getting in. If Chelsea finished 10th and won the Champions League, they would get in, not the fifth place team. Alpha here says, uh, cat flap is shut for Arsenal and Egal. Bad luck, but they didn't merit it. Over both legs, Villarreal were better and more clinical. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, is a fact. That there is a cast iron fact. Viewers, I want you to get your questions in for the panel. The panel will be on a little bit later on in the show. If you're new to the football terrace, we do individual calls. The panel come in at about 30 minutes into the show where we discuss things in more detail. Start getting your super chat questions in right now for the panel, what you want to pick up. And you know what we'll do tonight? The best, I'm going to give this responsibility to KJ tonight. The best question, the best question tonight will go into a prize draw. He's going to go into a prize draw to win a football chair of your choice. I'll, hand, I'll delegate over to KJ to pick the best Super Chat question. So a question for one of the panellists. Will here says, I knew we wouldn't go through in the last five minutes because the players didn't believe in themselves. They had no confidence whatsoever. Gutted, gutted is what Will M has to say. Gabrielle says, chasing a game. Why take off Aubameyang? This is all about Arteta's poor subs over two games. Arsenal run on the cheap. Gunas are fuming. Gunas are fuming here. We've got Shadman in the house. Shadman says, oh, absolutely awful. When you need a goal, you take off a Bamiyang and bring on William and Enketia. Get out of here. Arteta out. Cronky out. Shadman isn't having it today. Shadman is raging. How are you feeling, ladies and gentlemen? Sorry, Terry. My bad. Everton missed out. No, no worries at all. No worries at all, Daniel. We've got a great panel backstage, by the way. Adam Matic is there. Igao is there. Cameron is there. Neeks is there. So far, not very many of the Gooners have turned up yet. I don't know where all the Gooners are right now, but I'll be here soon. Let's do some more of these chats coming through here. Stacey, Arsenal got rid of the manager that came back and bit them in the butt. He proved he's a better manager than Arteta. Ironic, really. It is ironic. It is ironic that Arsenal Football Club, that Arsenal Football Club, who sacked Emery in the chance to salvage their season, season and knocked out by the same very man. That is irony personified. Personified. The only thing stopping United winning is complacency. And if they think they've won it before kickoff, agree. Man United tonight did get complacent at times. We were It was training ground stuff and we become sloppy and we become lackadaisical and we conceded. That was when the job was done, though. I, I don't really have concerns about that happening in the final. And I was watching the Villarreal goalkeeper. If we can't exploit him, we don't deserve to win this tournament. Not on your Nelly. Not on your Nelly. I'm going to start bringing the first callers in this evening. As we've said before, everyone hit that like button on nearly 700 on YouTube. And we're on nearly, nearly catching you on Facebook as well. Facebook or on your towels, YouTube. So both keep hitting those like buttons. Share the stream with your friends and your family. Let's do a few Facebook comments here. Johnson says, Arteta out. He is clueless and knows nothing. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Gise Giuseppe here says, David De Gea, very lucky. I thought David De Gea was class tonight. Everyone's going to have a different view and opinion on that. We're going to go to the calls now, ladies and gentlemen. First up, big Arsenal fan in the house. It's going to be man lucky gal. I don't quite know where he's gone. He just disappeared um, off the screen. He may be back in a few moments. He's back now. Your gal's with us. You're out. You're out. You're out of the Europa League. Give me your instant reaction, Igal. Good 
uh, Terry, this is I had all my eggs in this basket at this point. Season's absolute trash. There's nothing I can I there's nothing I can say or do to defend a manager who's in the position we're in and got out of the Europa League. I'm going to say this, when it comes down to it, we have a lot of work to do. The whole situation at the club is rotten and it's not going to change overnight and we just need to bin off this season and go again next season because at this point there's nothing I can say to make myself feel better about what the situation that we're in. What went wrong tonight in your opinion? Where were the mistakes? Why wasn't there the urgency? Why wasn't there the chances created? What was wrong with Arsenal? There was no plan. It, the midfield was absolutely horrendous. He went with he went with no one to help Pate and Pate was by himself and he couldn't he couldn't do it by himself. Bellerin, I don't know why Bellerin started. Absolute idiotic decision for to start Bellerin after he didn't play in, in many games in a row. I would have at least played either Chambers or, or Cedric. I don't know why he played Bellerin. Looking back at it, I tried to reason and understand it because Shaka was not because Shaka was starting at left back. But the moment Kieran Tierney started, because Shaka got injured at half uh, during the warm up, you had to you had to do something else besides play Bellerin. It made no sense. And then the whole tactics to have two two of Smith Rowe and Odegaard in the team with. Pate, Saka, uh, and and everybody else in front of them it made no sense. And why on earth he took a Bamiyang off? It makes no sense, honestly, Terry. When people tell me constantly, "Yo, if if Arteta was sacked back in February, we'd be in a better situation," I don't know. That's all hypotheticals. But seeing what Chelsea's doing, it makes me wonder if we would have done something, would we have been in a better situation? Because right now, we are honestly nowhere near any, uh, nowhere near fixing our situation in the league. We're not going to win the Europa League. He looks like the board and, and everyone else is going to back him. And as long as, as long as, as long as he's here, honestly, we're not going to go nowhere. It's absolutely pathetic. I don't know what to do with Arteta. I don't know what to do with this board. I don't know what to do with anybody. I'm not saying I'm Arteta out. I'm not saying I'm Arteta in. I'm just saying when it comes down to it, this is the club that I support, and this is pathetic. We need to fix up from the top to the bottom. Yeah, listen, I, I feel your pain on that. I, I really, really do, it, Gal. We're going to get you on with the panel a little bit later, give you some time to reflect on this. We'll get you on uh, in a while so the viewers can ask you all the questions they want to. Um, we'll speak to you in a few moments, bro. Thank you very, very much indeed. You see the dejected nature there. Egal's going to be back soon with us when the panel come back. Joe here says, Egal in the mud. I think I saw Emery sneak out before kickoff and lace the grass again. Hashtag trust the paella pulis process is what Joe has to say. We're going to go to Brandon next, who is another Arsenal fan who, who looks fuming. It says, who say who stays and who goes in the Arsenal first team and who would you buy? Ginger Fury, that's a great question. We'll pose that to the panel a little bit later. Uh, London is blue, not hearing anything. Arsenal relegation battle next season when they choose to keep our Teta. We've got Aaron here that says Arteta lost the plot today, taking off a Bamiyang when you need a goal. Um, sorry, that disappeared there. When you need a goal and he just hit the post, someone explain why. Uh, we'll pose that question as well, Aaron. Not David T says sometimes a trophy can hide that you are struggling a little bit. Trophies are for egos. That was what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said. Um, he was clearly talking about Arsenal and taking a shot and maybe just maybe Oli had a point there because Arsenal have regressed under Mikel Arteta. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Brandon's going to be on with us now. Keep those super chats coming, ladies and gentlemen. Brandon is here. He's a gooner. He's upset. He's dejected. Give me your thoughts, mate. What have I been saying, Terry? Since the eighth game of this season, what have I been saying? This manager is clueless. He's a fraud. Get him out of the club. But let's not get it twisted. These players are just as fucking useless as him. Spineless, pathetic, disgraceful performance yet again. But, yeah, the criticism has to come for the manager again. Because why is he playing Hector Bellerin? Hector Bellerin was getting run all over the pitch all fucking game. Thomas Partey was getting overrun in the midfield. What did Mikel Arteta do to change it? Nothing. And the mistakes that he made in the first leg is what has cost us the uh, place in the final. Not today, the first leg. 
pathetic, absolutely pathetic. But you know what? I don't even know why I'm losing my head, mate, because I know full well that this geezer is still going to be manager of Arsenal Football Club next season. It's embarrassing. The the rumours are the rumours are Brandon that he will be the manager and that they're going to give him some money to spend. Wh- where do you go from here, uh, in your opinion, under Mikel Arteta? What 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 can happen next? What does he need to do to get you back up? You could finish as low as tenth. No trophies, no European football. Is that the right direction for Arsenal? I tell you what, I honestly don't know, Terry. I'm th- I'm fed up. I'm sick to the teeth of this football club. Do you know because like Agal said, it is rotten from top to bottom. Like, don't get it twisted. But for fuck's sake, you know, oh, I, I don't even know what to say, mate. I really don't. I really don't. I, 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 feel, I feel the pain. I mean, could you make sense? We have a few people question, why was a bummer yang taken off? Why are you taking off attackers? When it doesn't matter if you conceded, you needed to score. Why, did, why do you think Mikel Arteta did that? What possessed him to make that change? Your guess is as good as mine, mate. I know I'm going to take Aubameyang off and I'm going to bring on Willian, who hasn't scored all fucking season. You know, I'm I'm going to um, throw on as many attacking players as I possibly can. Forgetting yeah. about the fact that, you know, we've been, we got outplayed by Villarreal. And do you know what annoys me the most about these players? The manager, and I'm talking about Unai Emery, this is a manager that these players down tools for in the end. These yep. players didn't want to play for him in the end. That is the reason he got sacked. Not because of the amount of games that he lost, but because he lost the dressing room. You should have energy and want to prove a point against this guy. They look flat. They look oh, just pathetic, mate. Pathetic. Brandon, right now, if they're watching right now, what's your message to the board and to Mikel Arteta? Sack Arteta. And Kroenke, sell this football club because you don't have the best interests of Arsenal Football Club at heart. Some, Most of the fan base does, but some of the fan base, I question it at times because there's still fans supporting this manager. How? We're 10th. We're out of every com- domestic competition. We're out of the Europa League now. There's nothing less for this season. Joke. Mate, I completely hear you and I, and I feel your pain. Brandon, we'll speak to you a little bit later on. Uh, Gunas tuning in from all around the world. By the way, biggest live match reaction show in the history of the football terrace. Over 7,500 people watching across all platforms right now. So a massive thank you to all of you for bringing that to life for us. Make sure you're hitting the like button, though. Sharing this stream, subscribing to the football terrace. If you're watching over on Give Me Sport, Make sure you come and subscribe to us over here afterwards. Arteta won a trophy and had a few good results against good teams last year. And a bunch of Arsenal fans thought he was the next Pep Guardiola. We're going to go to another Guna now before. We're going to go to one more Guna before uh, we bring the Man United fans on, who, who look like they've got a lot to say tonight as well. First up, Daniel's with us. Big Arsenal fan. You're out of the Europa League. Give me your thoughts. Hi, Ted. Can you hear me? I can, mate. Um, well, we've been telling you about this manager since November, but apparently because I've not backed him, I should go down to White Hart Lane, according to one of your, well, f- a panellist or one of your callers. But it is what it is. Um, but to be honest, Terry, um, this is going to sound controversial, but for the benefit of Arsenal Football Club, I don't mind us not winning the Europa League. And the reason I say that is because with the Cronkies, um, because they've they're not they've not been in the Champions League for five years, because of this pandemic, they they're in 120 million debt or something like that, and they've lost a lot of revenue. And no European football, they're going to lose so much revenue. They might consider maybe considering selling to Daniel Ek. And if you say to any Arsenal fan, would you rather win the Europa League or risk losing it? But I mean, Kroenke would sell to Daniel Ek. I think they'll choose this one. So I'm um, I'm. Um, this is not because I want Arteta sacked because I don't think they're going to sack him for win- for not winning the Europa League. I still think he's going to be here next season. But I think yeah. the benefit I'm thinking of is that he because Kroenke is going to lose a lot of money now. No European football, not even no Champions League, no Europa League. Yeah. Finishing 10th, 
we we kicked out so many of the staff. He's low, yeah. low been financial trouble right now at the football club. He might consider saying Daniel Ek, and now because of this, Arsenal fat. Because if we wanted yeah, to be believe, it would be all seem, forgiven by Arsenal. You seem very calm compared to how you conquers. normally are on these streams. You seem re you seem just really reserved about it. Because I'm used to it, Terry. And to be honest, I was kind of thinking to myself, if we won the Europa League, there'll be apps. We'd be in the Champions League. First of all, we would get battered in the Champions League. Yeah. But second of all, the main, most important thing that I'm thinking of, it might not happen, but it's very likely now, maybe. Conquer is going to lose a lot of revenue. The fans hate him. They're, they're making noises now. I was really disappointed with the protest, by the way, earlier. That wasn't, oh, and I saw your stream. That wasn't a protest. That was a, a, uh, yeah, a, a gathering. Uh, that was a uh, you, know I would, you know, I would say, mate, I, I get your point, but the fact that the protest lost momentum tonight in itself uh, tells me it's already starting to starting to die. But we'll see. Right, Listen, now, right now, because of this, I yeah. to, just before I go, so because on, of this, Arsenal fans are going to get angry again and they might start making noises and Cronky might consider selling. So if this happens, this result could be one of the greatest results for Arsenal's history if that meant Kroenke was going to sell. So that's why I'm calm it, about it. it. It may. I would not be counting your chickens, though, Daniel. Thank you very much for coming on and Please, having your say. Really, really, really appreciate that, buddy. Um, we've got Sam Tonks on next, and then we're going to be going to Adam, then KJ. Then we've got Neeks backstage as well. Tom Little's there. Uh, Sam, welcome to the Football Terrace, mate. How are you? Mate, I've, uh, I've been better. I've been better, I'll be honest. Um, yeah, um, my mate, uh, I'll tell you what sums up the night is um, in my group chat, my mates were going, um, oh, Arsenal will score. Arsenal will score. They'll get a 90th minute winner. Everything will be fine. I'm sitting there going, no, we're not. No, we're not. You've seen this too many times this season. Uh, Arsenal peter out, don't score at home. How many times have Arsenal failed to score at home? Burnley, Everton, Man City, Liverpool. Even this year, we, we had such good momentum coming into this year, didn't we? When we beat Tottenham. And then what happened after that? We were 3-0 down to West Ham at half-time. It seems that game has been the catalyst for the absolute capitulation. Because this run in the Europa League really was pretty easy. We had Benfica, who somehow we had to get bailed up by Bamiyan. Olympiakos, bailed up by Saka. Um, and then we had Slavia Prague to we battered in the second leg because they're that bad. And then Villarreal, the only reason we didn't get battered in the first leg is because Emery's um, pragmatic and he sat back on 2-0. That first leg could have been 3 or 4 to Villarreal easy. Um, and tonight, like the guy said about protests, um, I thought it was a good idea to give them a bus welcome because it is the biggest game we've had in years. So be positive for tonight get back on it, the Premier League games protest. That team performance tonight was as if we were playing Villarreal in the Emirates Cup. There was no intensity, no desire to go in the game. I don't know if that's the players. I don't know if that's Arteta, because in a semi-final, there is no team talk, is there? You know, Arsenal's European football's up for grabs. Go do it for the fans who haven't been here for a year. Nothing. Um... I'm an Arteta backer. I've got a shirt framed of Arteta, actually, from when I got it in 2012 when he signed. Um, and now you can't defend him anymore. That was a disgrace tonight, mate. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely. I, I agree. I, I, I would be so disappointed with that performance um, if I was an Arsenal fan tonight. That there, there is no doubt about that. Would you be comfortable with Mikel Arteta staying on? You just don't see what's going to happen, though. Like, you know, where... Is if you if a manager stays on, you you're meant to have sort of like you see where he's going, like what the plans are. Um, you at least think next season, okay, we're going to do this, 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 and we're going to move up from what is it, eleventh now? Like we're below Leeds, who have lost as many games as they've as they've won. I don't know what the plan is. Um, I think our transfer plans are up for the the air. I don't know what's going on with Lacazette. He's got a year left. Um, we've signed Balogun to a deal, but I don't remember the last time he played for the first team either. So I don't know what's going on there. Um, and Aubameyang as well, who's was in and out of the team before he got malaria. Even with malaria, he was comfortably the best player in the team. So what's going on yeah. with the rest of them? 
Um, I, 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 I totally hear you, mate. I really do. You sound dejected and frustrated. And listen, Absolutely thank not. you very much for calling in, mate. And um, I've got to check out your articles later on Give Me Sport, mate. So I'll speak I to you soon. I just posted an image of Emery, mate. I'm gutted. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Sam, top man. And I'll speak to you soon, mate. Take care, yeah, buddy. Mate. Thank, thank you, you very, very much indeed. Uh, that's Sam Tonks, one of our uh, journalist partners over at Give Me Sport. Gutted. I was talking to him today in the offices and he was up for it. Didn't go the way he wanted. We're going to speak a bit of Man United now. Stay with us. The panel's coming very, very soon. Adam Matic is here with us now. Man United through to the final. Uh, a loss on the night. Uh, give me your thoughts, mate. <laughs> Just listening to all the Arsenal fans there, mate. It's like your world ain't that bad for us, mate, is it, in terms of what's happening on the pitch? But uh, tonight was just for us was one of them, mate. We're just going through the motions from start to finish. We didn't really look like we wanted to get out a second gear. We just had what we've had all season, mate. We've had firepower, which has dug us out of many a holes. Tonight it was just that we was, I think, a bit a bit rusty, if I could say that. It looked like we was. It looked like we'd had two weeks off. It looked like we'd missed a game at weekend because yeah. it took us a while to. Get, we didn't even get going, so we can't even say it took us a while to get going. But when you've got the quality we've got in our front line, uh, we, we're a match for anyone, even when we're bad. And the defence tonight was pretty poor, pretty shaky. I mean, by coming in, obviously, he looked a little bit rusty for me, but it was set pieces again, marking for us. It's a bit of a worry because we're looking at who we're going to be playing in the final in terms of Emre, the low block. This is what we're looking at right now. Tonight, we can pretty much forget about it. We're already looking ahead to the final, and you're trying to figure out where the issue is going to be. It is that. It is Emre, that low block, yeah. and what we struggle against. The defending of set pieces and crosses, which we've always struggled against. That's what we've got to try and work on now. I mean, we've got five free hits to get ready for the final now in the league because the league is put to bed. But really, Ollie's in the perfect situation right now. We've got Ollie's squad coming back to full fitness. Yeah, we've got a few games now in a week, but for me, there's no excuse now going forward. We should be more than comfortable enough to handle these next few games, especially with us having the break and the size of our squad. And Martial coming back soon as well could be a bit of a boost towards the end. And... Like I keep saying, mate, now the game today we had Pogba, Donny van der Beek and Bruno all playing together. Yeah. Even in second gear, it looked it looked dangerous, mate. So when they start really firing, then we're going to be a different, different class altogether. We all know the problems with United. We're not going to be able to rectify them until the summer. That is a whole different story altogether with what's going on off the pitch right now, obviously. But... What we've got on the pitch right now, trying to keep it strict with football and what's happening out there, I think we've got more than enough to beat Villarreal. Yeah. Like I said, there's, there's no real issue at all going forward, even with the amount of games and the fixture pile up. We've got a big enough squad. The league position is done and dusted. Champions League is pretty much in the bag. Yeah. And now Ollie's just got to look at it and go, right, what is my team? He's got all his time now to figure out what he's going to do in the final. The only concern I've got is what Emery did to Arsenal tonight, that low block, the quality defending, restricting Arsenal. And they created absolutely nothing from what I've seen from the minimal yeah. highlights I've seen so far. One shot on target was it Arsenal had. That's the only thing Ollie's going to come up against the tactician in the final. And that's what we have to be wary of. We have to be wary of someone like that against Ollie. But Cavani again showing his class tonight. I mean, 14 goals this season. He should have had four or five tonight, to be honest. But yeah. I think that type of player is what will give Ollie his trophy, mate. That's what it will be. We've got we've got world class players. We've got finalist specialists in the likes of Pogba. We've got the attitude of Bruno. We've got Cavani there. If everyone stays fit, and like I said, we don't do anything stupid in these next few games in the league, there's no excuse for Ollie not lifting that trophy up. Uh, in a couple of weeks, mate. It's all set out perfectly for him, and I'm looking forward to it. It's not been a great time recently. We've not been talking much about football, everything that's going on, but yeah. right now, that's probably what I'm looking ahead towards more. The league games just don't have the significance for us fans yeah. at the moment, and the final may be a, a, a final may be a good break. Uh, for us, something to actually look forward to because it's it's crap at the moment off the pitch, but. Right now, 
there's a team in a worse position than us, mate. <laughs> That's them down there in London, pal. Uh, mate, I couldn't agree with you more, bro. Thank you very much for coming on tonight and having your having your say, mate. And we'll chat to you again soon. Top man, Adam, thank you very much. Uh, man like Zane. I haven't seen Zane in a minute. He just says, ah, Teta out. Says, ah, Teta out. We're going to be getting a panel on now, ladies and gentlemen. Do me a big, big favor. If you're watching over on Facebook, hit that like button. If you're watching on YouTube, do the same thing as well. 1,200 likes on YouTube right now. You've killed Facebook this evening. So a massive well done uh, to you again. We're going to bring the panel on. KJ, Cam, Egal, Neat, David. We will be taking calls. We've got Samuel, Sonny, Gooner Express, and Tom Little all backstage waiting to come on and have their say tonight. Don't go anywhere else. No one has got the variety, the quality, the analytics, the jokes that the Football Terrace has got. Hit the like and the share button. Subscribe. Let's do this, people, right now. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Um, there let, we go. Let, let, let me begin by saying, good evening. Good evening, KJ. Good evening. 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 <laughs> good, good, uh, what a brilliant Keep laughing. Keep laughing. What a brilliant evening. I'm, I not will. This, I'm, I not will. I'm not saying that because I was happy with our performance. I'm saying that because the poetry that I wanted, the poetic justice that I wanted, the football storyline that I wanted came through. Look, and boy, just, what just a beautiful quickly, way. I know that Man United play tonight. We'll touch them a little bit later. Like I don't think it's 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 the focus so much tonight. Um, I want to speak to the United fans because I I'll be honest with you. I, even when we can see that third goal, I was I still a bit like I don't care. I'm watching Arsenal. That's how I felt tonight. Like it's no. it, to, to a degree, listen. I didn't. I didn't yeah. happy we lost, but it was circum. Tonight for me just felt like circumstances. If that made sense for Man United, but what went wrong tonight? I want to go to Neeks first on this. What went wrong for Arsenal tonight? Why were they so bad? It's the same thing that's been going wrong for Arsenal all season. Two words: Mikel Arteta and Igal. Look at me when I say this. You are in the mud. All season, and you know it. You know, you know you're in the mud. All season, you've been beating this drum about Mika Artel. The league table lies. Well, does the European League table lie? Oh, he hasn't done anything to prove that he's a bad manager. He was a bad manager in this time. He was a, a two-one scoreline for Latter's Arsenal. If you were terrible, you were absolutely garbage. I was literally just watching a little clip from Troops on his back again live stream. He took off a Bamayang. He, you need a goal, and he took off your three hundred and fifty thousand pound per week striker, Golden Boot winner in former years for Willian. Mikel Arteta is the reason Arsenal are out. Nothing more and nothing less. Igal, good evening. Good evening. So you're going to ignore the fact that this team's finished? And you're just going to go... Talk about it. It's been finished. It's been he finished. Is listen, yeah. listen, listen. Arteta, Arteta is the one that finished it, bro. Like, and, and that's the issue, Fab. He, bro, I, we know you Arsenal have been Arsenal in for years now. But you put your faith and your hope and everything into this man. Pep's and convoy. We were you, call him what he is. Pep's convoy. We've because been when Solskjaer was a key a PE teacher, everyone was happy to call him a PE teacher. He's a cone boy. A, a, a dinner lady. Yeah, I said. No, listen, listen, listen. We, we told you, Miguel, to slow down, give him time, actually let him do certain things and prove himself. You were like, nope, he's better than Oli, bro. Yo, is he better than Oli now? Can't even get to a final. Yo, you, talk to me about that. Yeah, it, it was awful tonight. And you know what? You've just seen, I mean, we've, we've put a poll out asking Arsenal fans if they've become Arteta out tonight. Currently, 87% of Arsenal fans have voted uh, either yes or like or not yet, as in like close to being there um, as it stands. One of the Arteta questions... Arteta in forever. Arteta in forever. Look, as a Man United fan, you'll say that. I want to ask you a question here. This was from Ginger Fury 97 Remember, get your super chat questions in. 
right now. And the best one that KJ is going to pick out later will go into a um, prize draw. This one's from Ginger Fury, a gal. And he says, who is the manager to take you back to the top four, in your opinion, a gal? Listen, it doesn't matter who the hell comes in. If we're, if we're going to have recruitment the way we have and we're not going to sign the right players and we're not going to back any manager who comes in, it doesn't matter what manager you put in, in charge, we're going to be shit forever. Yeah, but you... Mm. I, mean, I mean, again, okay, Tuchel, cool, yeah. too cool was there. Ancelotti was there. Mourinho was there. But instead you were like, nah, we've got Arteta. It's calm. Like, yeah. there are managers... They're like You're acting like Arteta is like this... This thing where it's like it's hard to find a better manager. It really isn't. It's really not that. No, hard. but do you really think? Do you really think if things stay the same, with with how bad everything is from top to bottom of the club, you bring okay. in the best manager in the world, he's gonna get us into top four. With yeah, us, I, I, out, out. I looked at it this way tonight. This is the way I looked at this. Your squad is better than Villarreal's, and a better manager beat you with a worse team. If yeah. you had a top class manager, your squad would be capable of at least challenging for the top four. It it, it, it truly true it truly would. Tarry here. How about on this? How about this? The one, man sec, one, sec, bro, one, one sec, bro. Tarry here on Facebook says Arteta is the worst Arsenal manager I have ever seen. That is from Aguna, uh, di direct from there. There's another question here I want to pose. This is question number two. Um, Jerome says, Congratulations to Man United for making the final. Arteta, can you still back Arteta? Are you still backing Arteta, Egal? I'm not backing nobody. I'm literally just, I'm just backing my team. I'm not backing no man, no player, no individual. I'm backing my club. And as long as, as long as he's the manager and we're, uh, we're going out there to win a game, I'm going to back the team. I'm not backing an individual. So I'm not Arteta in. I'm not Arteta out. I'm not Arteta shake it all about. I'm just saying, yo, at the end of the day, if he's still in charge, I can't do nothing about it, so I'm just gonna sit on the edge man, and be like, man, oh, man, man's, man's, man's got enough finest. blind hope and dreams, well, listen, fam. That's it, what it gets is. as close as he ever beat Arteta out because he was Arteta in, 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 in a few he months ago. So. Mate, he was man in was deep, bro. He was, he was deep. deep. Listen, he I completely 110, 50% get why every single person who's Arteta out wants him out. And I get why people who were saying it for months ago and I was criticizing are probably right now saying, you know what? I told you so. And you know what? You're probably right. Because this guy's not going to be the one to get us back to the top four. He's not going to be the one to get us into Champions League football. But he's probably going to keep the job until December. And that's when they're probably going to end up sacking him. Because Arsenal Football Club is not going to sack him until probably December next year. Let's be real. And, and uh, but, sorry, 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 sorry. Don't you, have, don't you have an issue with that in the sense that your tenth in the league. Yeah. Your tenth in the league. You're you got no chance of Champions League football. You got a very very slim chance of European football, and that's only because of this new European Conference League. And if you finish, if you happen to scrape into seventh, you might get it. Like, is that should you not want him? Should, would you not want your club to act serious? Listen, and get him gone in the summer. Who's who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who's making decisions? Because yeah, at the end of the day, Arteta you know, you know, came, came out and real. said he was in charge. Who's, gonna, who's, who's, who's in charge? But it Arteta came out. Okay. 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 Ikao, Ikao, what's up? Ikao. Ikao, I get that point because it's similar to Man United. But Arteta has done nothing to show that you should keep him anyway. Like, you're asking about, oh, who's in charge, who's in charge. A better manager will work under these circumstances. Ali no. Gunnar Solskjaer. Ali Gunnar Solskjaer is working under such hard circumstances underneath uh, the Glazers, but yet he's still getting something out of his team. You're misunderstanding Arteta should be getting something out of the team. Who's going to sack him? The, uh, the guys are in America. They're not here watching the game. They're, uh, they're not here on the ground uh, sacking him. Vinay's is not going to sack him. Because Vinay has the same... Uh, I, I, I disagree, bro. I, I, I still... I would not be shocked and surprised I know a lot of people are saying he won't go. I wouldn't be shocked. Question this is from Alan, who says, Does Egal still trust the process considering the process is currently ninth in the Premier League? Forget the manager per se right now. Do you trust the direction that Arsenal Football Club are going in? Are you behind your club's direction right now, Egal? Listen, without without somehow getting the Europa League and, and being able to attract better players, we're going to have to do a very good job in recruitment to, to plug the holes that we have coming next season. We're, we, we've just set ourselves back. 
I would say two years. So can I by, speak on by, your about not getting into Champions League football? I want to speak on the recruitment at Arsenal because like something needs to be said. Now I'll, I'll take like I almost have to walk back my flop of the season Kai Havertz comment now and put it on Partey because questions have to be asked of players who want to go play at Arsenal straight up or do they even want to be there or is it the money? What is it? Because yeah, because like if we're gonna be completely honest here, like if I'm Partey. And you could have gone pretty much anywhere because at the time he was considered like the best. Like, everybody wanted him. You, he chose Arsenal. You see Gabriel, everybody was talking about, oh, United missed out. He chose Arsenal. And you're sitting there being like, why are you choosing a team that's finished ninth, finished eighth, that's finished tenth? Like, why are, we, why are they choosing the squad? And it's really confusing when you have like an Arteta who went out in the media and he talked about, oh, the Arsenal way, we're bringing it back. Well, and I told him he's going to win Champions League here. Give me three years. Like, my question now is, the players that Arsenal are bringing in and then the Obama Yang thing, that, that fiasco, giving him that contract when he clearly wanted to leave and then you threw a bunch of money at him and you kept him. So the questions now have to be asked. Do players even want to go to Arsenal in the future? I know they're still a big club. I'm somebody who's always said that Arsenal's a, I've always said Arsenal's a bigger club, in my opinion, I thought, than Chelsea. And that's not the case anymore. It's just it's slowly fading away and you're turning into Aston Villa, in my opinion. It, like it's gone. And, and do you know what's interesting? On... Thomas Partey, he was viewed as one of the best. I don't want to get stuck on the nuance of his position, but just say central midfielders because he fits into that category. He was viewed as one of the best central midfielders in the world when Arsenal signed him to a point where Arsenal Football Club released a song. In, so not the club, let me refer to that. Arsenal football fans released a song about the signing. And I watched the player tonight Ghost the game. He did tonight what I saw him do in the game, in one of his first games against Man United, but we just didn't punish you. Gave the ball away on the edge of the box umpteen times. Maybe he'll come good next season, but right now looking at Thomas Partey, I think he's only marginally better than the likes of El Nenny, and that's because he's slightly more athletic. Garnet and Adam Lallana. He was left for dead today. He's the Garnet and Adam Lallana right now. I wouldn't now. swap him for Scott McTominay, I wouldn't even stop him for Fred. Yourself, I think please. he is being bang average this season and he needs to improve dramatically as a football player, Thomas Partey, because of the hype and the CV and the accolades and the kind of and, and the scouting reports and the buzz that surrounded him. He has been a categoric flop. He has been run through like a hot knife through butter. He's dodgy on the ball at the edge of the box. He's passing average. He doesn't score goals. He doesn't create. He doesn't control midfield. Doesn't break up the play particularly well. There has been nothing from Thomas Partey this season that I look at and think, oh, yeah, I understand why so many clubs were looking at him. But you know what I've realised? United were looking at him. Chelsea were looking at him. But none of them actually went in and bid. And maybe we're seeing why. Maybe we are legitimately seeing the reasons why nobody went in for Thomas Partey. He needs such a big season next year. Otherwise, he's one of the worst signings because of the yeah. hype surrounding it in Arsenal's Premier League history. All oh, four yeah. one, one I'm not say, you, you didn't sign him, but he's just yeah. been catastrophic signing. KJ, oh, before one, you go, what, what, say one thing. What, no, no, I'm, I'm going to be short. One, one could say he's, he's taking his time with his performances. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay. That does not even deserve air horns. That deserves a wah, wah, wah. I've got to do some super packs here. Um, what the hell do you mean you can't do anything about it, Agal? Didn't the fans protest to stop the Super League? Get your banners out and get this manager out. Gunas are deluded. There's loads more I've got to do here. First one here, Mark says, Arteta out. Clearly, we are going backwards. At this point, I'd take sorry. Arsenal has no process. We couldn't even string three passes together tonight. The beautiful game vintage says there's no getting better unless Kroenke is out. Arteta needs to be sacked. Also, Arteta is not an Arsenal legend and people fight harder for him than fighting for change. Protest needs to continue. Stop buying the kits. David Kitts, uh, as if by magic, says, um, Terry, can you ask Igao what colour... London is. It's a relevant question. What color is London, bro? It's a relevant question. Keep it moving. <laughs> he, keep it, he won't answer Dave Kitts. He won't answer Dave Kitts. Uh, if Chelsea win the Champions League, 
Gal, if you could, would you happily trade your invincible winning Premier League trophy for two Champions Leagues? Another uh, irrelevant question, of course. <laughs> that means yes, bro. Listen, that means yes. He rattled. He's rattling. Rattled like a bottle full of pills. Okay, so getting back to Thomas Partey, if you play Odegaard and Smith Rowe in front of Thomas Partey, in a game that means this much, and we've never played that system this whole time. At this point, Arteta was 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 literally committing football. I don't even want to say it. Just forget it. Honestly, he just ridiculous. No, no, my point is, my point to that is, is that you guys are talking about world class player, and I've heard this thing of world class players. No, but how are you going to call in somebody? Any, in any bro, system. he was bad. He was bad. I get it. In any system. Bad. But there are seven to eight other players on the pitch that were just as bad. Or maybe I was, I was just yeah, but when you're when you're the forty yeah. million pound marquee signing of the summer, we signed him on deadline day to get all the fans gas for the season. You've got yeah, you yeah, have but, to you have to show up. No, no, that that is true. That is true, David. But this is where Arteta has got blood in his hands because where was his support? Where where was his support in the midfield? Really, I saw the lineup and I saw Partey as like, eh, Where's his partner? Who who no, was there with him? But, but you know, what I was gonna say it's like uh, listen, Partey deserves the smoke, and and I guess it's, I say Partey. It's more the Arsenal fans who are backing Partey like he was the the savior because Partey never came and said I am gonna turn you into champions. Man just mm -hmm. came on the deadline day because he had a release clause, injured, played a couple games, blah blah blah. You know, trying to do a job, earn a living. But you've also got man like Pepe. Remember, that... just because he wasn't signed this season, just because he wasn't signed this season, Pepe cost seventy-two million, and he ain't even worth seven point two right now. <laughs> Aubameyang's on three hundred and fifty thousand a week. Lacazette, I mean, he's been your best striker, and he's lack of threat, not Lacazette. But Kaya Saka, Emil Smith Rowe, and a lone, uh, a lone player from um, Real Madrid. He can't get in the Real Madrid side. You see how bad Real Madrid were yesterday? Wow. Jeez, they are your star players. And you know, like, and you can look at Yo, Odegaard can go back to Real Madrid. Madrid. I don't want him. And, and you know what? And, and bro, do you know what Odegaard's done? Odegaard, he had a slightly bigger splash when he came in than your guy, Danny Ceballos. But he's leveled out. He's leveled mm. out and he's showing... The thing is, I said this before, very, very rarely in football, the parent clubs loan out their young players who actually end up making it at the club. And there are examples of where it works, but it's few and far between when you look at the masses of young players that go out on loan, especially as reg regularly as Odegaard's going out. He is he, he's one of those players. It, he's an, he is the eye test dream. He looks great being bad, but he doesn't do very much, but he looks good doing it. Do you know what I mean? He's a bit like, you ever work with a guy in an office who's rubbish at his job, but he's a stunning looking geezer and the boss lets him get away with it for whatever reason. That's basically it. I've got more super chats. We're going to go to more calls. We've got loads of people waiting backstage. Chris says, party realized that he, that he isn't good enough uh, when he doesn't have um, Marco Lorente, uh, Sal Naguez and Koke helping him so much in that position. Yo, Arsenal fans were fooled is what Chris was. I did say y'all that way as well. Cause that's how it reads when I say it. Uh, look at Neek smirking at e <laughs> uh, David says, could you make a joke about Arsenal? But um, I wouldn't. One, two. One, two. One, two. Ah, <laughs> one, two. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> I had like, no chance you're getting that, Terry. Tenth and no European football. How do you attract players? Do you buy or sell? I'm going to pose that question to David. Do Arsenal have to buy now to be able to sell? Can they attract? I mean, are they going to get a gal's number one target in Jack Grealish now? <laughs> I mean, as I, as I was telling these men months ago, they, they are not in that level where they can go and buy players. What you have to do is you have to adopt the Dortmund method. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to go to clubs. You're going to have to find their, their young players who are falling out of academies. And you're going to have to try and pinch them and hope they come into your team and, and explode. Like a Moose, Moose Diablo at Leverkusen fell out in academy. He's coming for free. And he's one of their best players right now. He'll be sold for 30, 40 mil. That's the, that's the thing they're going to have to do now because they can no longer attract that level yeah. of player. When yeah. Martinelli is your best player and he's come from the fourth tier of Brazilian football, you know that you are in a, a very bad state as I've a been, club. Like I've, been saying this for, I've been saying this for a while now. They need to do scorch earth, start again. Start completely again. You don't need the Abamyangs, the Lacazettes, the Bellerins, all these men on high wages 
Go out, get your Bendias, get your Adwars, get your Basumas, get you, get you those Ivan level Tony's players. Ivan Tony's in it. Yeah, Ivan Tony's. Get the get the level oh, of players. Case, get who, any, yeah. The thing is, who want to come in? Who want to come in yeah. um, into Arsenal and develop themselves and develop their game and develop their name? These big names coming into Arsenal right now, it, it looks like they're just here for the paycheck. They look like they're here to have a good time, to take their time with it, to party hard. You know what I'm saying? That's what they look like they're here to do. And it's, you don't need that. Yeah. You don't need no, that. You need young, but, hungry players. You need quality. And look, you, you spent a lot of money. You've got a big wage bill compared to teams that are in front of you in the Premier League. Arsenal need to readjust. Whether Arteta is that man, I don't know. We're going to go to more calls now. We will speak a bit of Man United a little bit later. But of course, the big news tonight is that Arsenal Football Club crash out of European football. They look unlikely to qualify. The first time in 25 years that they will not be in European competition unless they have the greatest end to the season ever and three or four teams above them fall off. They will not be playing European football for the first time in 25 years. That's life. That's literally life. That's how long that is. Arsenal and Spurs, who will be the first to realise they need Benitez for three years? Let him build them to a solid, good team again who can win trophies. That's from Wall Street, Matilda. Listen, 100%. I think managers like Rafa Benitez are definitely overlooked, but we're going to go to calls now. Keep them super chats coming. Keep hitting that like button as well, please. Nearly 1,500 on YouTube, just under 500 on Facebook. Keep hitting those like and share, but I'm record-breaking night again on the Football Terrace. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, let's go to some more calls. Let's change this list here. Next on the show, we are going to have, oh, we're going to have man like Sonny. Sonny's here with us now. What are you saying, mate? Um, first, I want to say sorry, I ain't got my headphones. Um, I couldn't can find them. Um, so you know what? I, ne I never thought, um, I was, I was, I was playing it down. I thought, I thought Arsenal couldn't upset me as much as they have done tonight. I actually feel fucking emotional, right? About my club, at the state of it, the state of it. Honestly, I feel, I, I feel emotional that we are, we have stooped to the, these, these, these fucking levels that we, that we stooped to, right? Um, just want to pull you up on Saint Terry, though, please. Um, the other day when you had your, your phone-in show, you, you, know, you had Arsenal fans saying um, it would be for Arsenal's benefit if they if they don't win tonight, they don't go they don't go through to to the final, right? I've got one thing to say to them, right? I just want to keep respectful um, because I know I don't want to swear on your program. Fuck off. That's what I say to them, right? That's what I say to them. Right? <laughs> That's what I say, fuck off, right? Because at the end of the day, I'm a fucking Arsenal fan, right? And I want Arsenal to win every single game, and I want Arsenal to win a trophy. And, and at the end of the day, do you think Stan Kroenke really cares if Arsenal won the Europa League and they got in the Champions League or not? Do you think for his, 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 his multi billions of pounds, it, would, it makes that much difference to Arsenal? No, it don't. It don't. Right? At the end of the day, we all know if you finish bottom of the league, you win, you get more money than if than if you if you do if you win the Champions League. That make no difference at all. So all them fans who want Arsenal to lose, get in the fucking bin and go up the road to their other their other sloppy mugs. Right. Um, also, now I want to call you Igal. Out. Igal, you're my brother, bro. Um, how can you turn on Arteta, bro? What's the matter with you, man? Right. Listen. Huh? It's got what, sense. What, listen. If, if if someone's bird don't conceive, what do you do? Do you, do you chuck her out? Do you chuck her out? <laughs> or do you no, 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 no. idea for whatever? I, 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 yeah. You don't do that. Listen. At the end of the day, it's a process. It's a shit process. We all know that anyway. You cut. The, the reason we don't trust the process is because we're run by a devil, right? We're run by a devil. So when when the devil is the one who's, who's running the club, what process are you going to trust? You know, Arteta might be talking for, 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 at, at, you know, for the benefit of the club, but at the end of the day, the geezer don't pull the strings, does he? He's a, he's sunny, a puppy. Sunny, you know? sunny, sunny. Ask me, ask me this question. Do Arsenal have the 10th best or worst squad in the Premier League? Nick, at the end of the day, bruv, you're, you're a United fan, bruv. Your, your opinion don't be shit tonight, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I didn't give an opinion. I'll ask you a question. I'll ask you a question. I didn't give an opinion. I'm asking for your opinion. I'm asking for your opinion. All right. I'll tell you what, 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 i will tell Right. Unfortunately, though, it's my show. 
So yeah. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm giving my opinion. And, and so, yeah, Sonny, I'm and sometimes you need an outside perspective to help you see the woods no, and the trees and that. You know yes, what I'm saying? No, like, you yes, you do. Yes, yes you do. You like do. we've we, a lot of rival fans have been calling out the truth about Arsenal for months. For months, and last of fans wanted to bat it away. They wanted to say we're being salty. They want to say our tetto is this and is that, and that our squad has got the best striker in the league. And that this is what happens when you keep things in house, Sonny. You sometimes you need the outside I, I, I perspective saying, yeah. to help you That's guys. Why consultants exist. Yeah, so I, I respect what you're saying, bro. Right, but even even you the other day, my, my bro, when you're going about a greenish, you 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 try to compare Aston Villa to Arsenal. Bruv, the only reason people live in Birmingham, bruv, is because they can't afford to live in London. Get that through your head. Hey, listen. Hey, 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 you want to get the hometowns, yeah? Let's go meet the Oh, you know what? Back to this, Sonny. My team are... Sonny, I swear. Thank you very much for coming on, mate, and having your say. Sonny is firing shots tonight. We've got some super chats to do. First one from Red. Says, Neat, you are savage. Just the way you're laughing is killing me here. Come on, Neeks. Be nice to Arsenal fans. I tell you, the Champions Never. League in three years. Never. That's almost impossible now of them not being like in, in where they're meant to be. We have another super chat here. A mammoth super chat here. But it's got, it ain't disappeared already, is it? Has there been that many comments since it came in? This is a madness. I can't believe this. Zane here, a hundred pound super chat. He says, Arsenal will rise from the ashes. Legends never die. I can't believe I can't bring that up. I don't know if KJ's got it on his yeah, screen. I'm try- I There's can't, too many I can't comments that come in. They've got to sort this out, StreamYard. You don't allow comments. We don't get to them straight away. It's crazy. Uh, we also had another super chat that came from Arjan, who says, the gassed up Obama Yang, who Martinelli, party hard, Odegaard, gassed up, biscuit, Tierney, um, and the new generation doesn't remember what they did 20 years ago. Arsenal, sorry, London is blue. Know your place, Gooners. But you do have... I'm going to read it out again. Zane's super chat year here. £100 super chat. Thank you very much, Zane. He says, Arsenal will rise from the acid, acid, ashes. Legends <laughs> never die. Um, that's a big statement. Legends never die, he yeah. says. Look at Legends Arteta, never what a legend. die. I, mean, I can't believe though. Sonny had the gall to say not to compare Arsenal with Aston Villa. Like, at the end of the day, there's a point where it's just the truth is in the pudding, right? You look at the table and you look at the players in Austin Villa, like Jack Grealish is the best player on both teams, in my opinion. So they've got the best player. Their manager's doing a better job. Like I would rather half of Aston Villa squad than what Arsenal has right now. So this is just the truth. And people need to understand that. Like this is coming from a North American who doesn't live in the history like the rest of you do. Because it's like, again, I'm only 10 years behind, but it's like, Aston Villa to me is coming on the way back up and Arsenal's going to where Aston Villa was. And there's no, there's nothing in sight that says it's going to change. And I've been I saying mean, this for like two years. Yeah, yeah, I, think yeah, Aston, yeah. I think Arsenal's the next Aston Villa. You're Cam. Them, these Arsenal brothers want to say, don't compare uh, freaking Villa and, and Arsenal, but you're a fan. Who, ask them who's got more Champions Leagues, more European trophies. Ask it's them true, that. right? Isn't like, Villa, Villa, Villa arguably have a better striker right now. They, yeah. have a better mid, they have the best midfielder out of the two clubs right now. They have the best defender out of the out of the two clubs right now, and they have the best goalkeeper. Yes. Go from Arsenal. Oi, wait, 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 um, David hey, and Martinez said this is a step up. He wasn't even lying. David, David, Everyone what are you saying? This Arsenal, Arsenal are Aston Villa's feeder club because they just picked <laughs> their best goalkeeper yeah. and said we're trying to get into European football. It's mad. It's mad. Uh, it, it really, it really is. We're going to take some more calls now. Keep the super chats coming. Daniel here uh, with a super chat. He didn't say anything though, but thank you very much for the donation to the football terrace. Martin says, respect Villa. At least they have a Champions League. Um, and that they do. They have a genuine European pedigree. Next on the show, man like Kesh is with us. What are you saying, Kesh? Oh, you man are actually on there just talking a load of nonsense. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> a load of nonsense. It in. No, it's not even about Artel. Listen, we played terrible today. Like, from the manager to the players, didn't do enough. There was no desire. There was no... Let me take this game by the scruff of the neck. There was no one actually trying to make a difference. Like everyone was trying to be very reserved. And for me, listen, Villarreal was there for the taking. Like they're a terrible team, absolutely terrible team. And it says a lot that we're at home and we didn't um, bring the battle to them. But to hear you not sit here and say, talk about Aston Villa and compare them to Arsenal. No, you're, you're going beyond the point now because. 
we're not talking about who's got the better team. We're talking about who's got actual pedigree. Yes, they've got two Champions League, but they can never live up to, live up to our name. If Arsenal want to get a Grealish and they've got serious ambition, they can get a Grealish. Let's let's not let's get things straight here. Let's get things straight here. Neeks, you're a big man. You know football. And you know, I know you're saying because you, the moment's right. You can bank at Arsenal because we're losing. But seriously, if Arsenal's got ambition and they want to go places, they can get a green. Without a shadow of a doubt. What's it going to get you? What's it going to get you? What's it going to get you? You lot lost to Villa, well, got knocked out to Villa out tonight. Yeah. And you want me to come on here talking logic? You're mad. That's not in the mud. That's not in the mud. That's not in the Today, listen. Like West Ole, bro. Okay, West yes, Ole. We're about the same age. We went to school when yeah. Arsenal Man United was a rivalry. I mm. don't give a damn. I don't care oh, I about it. Green. I get it. It's, um, no. you, it's it. I'm um, banter. I get, have it. Run. I get That's it. it. That's what I said. I point out. I said the moment's right, and you can give the banter. So I pointed out. But I'm coming here. I'm talking logic. At the end of the day, these cronky fools are talking about yes, they're gonna back the team. They're not backing the team. I know they're not. They're not going to back the team. But backing the team is for me is not just giving, going to sign a player for forty five million, and getting a release clause, and saying that's it. Arsenal needs real backing. We're going to be out of the Europa League. We're going to be out of the competition. We're going to be in three competitions: FA Cup, um, League Cup, and the and the Premier League. What they need to do now is say, listen, we've not treated this asset correctly. For me, yes, you can say they spent money, but they've not spent it right. If you go back and look at deals when it comes to buying Shaka and overlooking the Kante, for me, you're saying they spent money, but no, they saved money. They actually saved money because they didn't want to pay agent fees. Let's overlook all of that now. Let's get down to the real nitty gritty and go and get quality players. Yes, you're saying Arsenal were out of European competition. They can't attract players. I don't for one second believe that. It's up to them now to go and do the right thing. And the right thing is, this team is not good enough. We are going to go and get players. Whether it's players in the likes of AC Milan or fucking Dortmund, whatever. Go and get them. Spend the money. Get real quality. Don't get players who just above average. Yes, they, they're expensive, but they're above average. Get quality. We're spending Cash. money. We're not spending it on the right quality. Cash. Cash. I, I agree. You don't need to spend a lot of money. Look at Leicester. Leicester... Um, with their great recruitment, they can sell a man for 50, 80, 60, whatever it might be, and replace a, a man like whoever it is for half the price they're selling for. So 100%, you don't need to spend a, a, a lot of money. But what Leicester also have is a quality manager. Do you mm -hmm. think Arteta will be sitting in third with Leicester's team? Like Brendan Rodgers is a quality manager. So you can go mm -hmm. and get the best players or talented players or, you know, scout, et cetera, et cetera. But you also need someone who's going to get the best out of those players. And Arteta has not proved, to me anyway, and a lot of people, that he can get the best out of the players. Because you you tell me, how many players at Arsenal has he got the best out of? You're, you're probably going to say less than a handful. No, it, it is less than a handful. It is less than a handful. But I've seen that from top quality managers. They get the best out of some players and don't get the best out of all of them. Yes, we're going to look at and see what Tichol's doing and all that. But Tichol had... 250 mil of quality players that yeah yeah their squad's different great players, players yeah, that yeah. a lot of teams across Europe wanted this team has been below average for quite a while and yes it is down to Mikel Arteta and it is down to the players also but there's a lot more factors into why we're playing so poor it's not just down to the manager or the player quality there's so much more it's a mentality yeah, issue but, it's it's yeah, a uh, it's, it's, I, I, it's, I, it's I just a okay. yeah. It's an IQ issue. If you look at the, what they, he, he wants these players to do, I don't think they, the skill sets match what he wants to do. There's too many players. Like, there's an imbalance. Everyone's getting onto Partey. This is not Partey's fault. Partey is a player that likes to get on the ball. But who wants to receive it off him? Who wants to get close to him, make angles, show for the ball? No one wants to do that. So, obviously, you, you've got a quality player in Partey. Who are you going to tell your players as an op opposition Get into his face. Make sure he, there's no there's no angles for him to pass out. And that's what we saw today. They got in his face and there's no one showing for him. You need players who wants to be on the ball with him. Keep it ticking. Ball retention. I, there's I mean, a lot of imbalance in this team. Yeah. I hear you on that. So much work needs to be done at Arsenal Football Club. We're going to keep the calls rolling in. Next up on the show, young Samuel is with us. What are you saying, Samuel? Keep Nothing them coming. Keep them coming. 
nothing ever goes right for us. You know what? I'll look at tonight. Listen, get the coffin out because the Arsenal Football Club is done. Stan Kroenke has let this club die to the ground, run it to the ground for the past 15 years. Everyone says 06 was Arsenal's death day and who came in 06? Stan Kroenke. N- now, more than ever, is his ta- he's under the most pressure he's ever been. And if a new owner wants to come in and buy Arsenal, now's the time. Because his fan base is broken, this squad is broken, the manager is broken. Everything from top to bottom in this club is broken. And I've backed this manager for so long. But for me, it's, it's done for me. He's done. He's got to go. He's got to walk. kronky has got to walk. Edu, Vinay, all of these men, absolutely awful, deal, awful deals throughout the season. Last summer, you know, they couldn't get Hasim Awad on because they effed it up. They fumbled the bag on it. So it's like, oh, okay, let's go wait to Dylan Day, activate this release clause, and our fans will get a massive wank off from getting Thomas Party. They got Thomas Party. You got, I know everyone got a massive rank off. I know Egal and Kesh wasn't done, but a majority of Arsenal fans. No, no Egal was there. one. No, no, no. It, it, Don't let him off the hook. Egal was doing the worm in robot. Man said he's better about, than Kimmich. Okay, remember that. So, no, but listen, what I've got to say is uh, what annoys me tonight is some people are focusing away from the real issue, which is Cronky. Okay, we need more protests. We need more protests now to get these owners out. Samuel, on that though, uh, on that though. It was a bunch of 12-year-olds that turned up to your protest tonight. I didn't see one prominent Arsenal fan. Like, not, 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 not an Arsenal fan. It, it was no big, I didn't see any big accounts there. I didn't see, I'm talking Twitter accounts, bloggers, vloggers, YouTubers. In terms of, I didn't see streams. I didn't see any uh, posts from any of them on socials. If I've missed someone who was there, I apologize. But I didn't see anything. And I thought, hang on, the biggest, loudest, noisiest voices didn't turn up to the protest tonight. You know, is that a sign? Maybe tonight re triggers it, but it just goes to show, oh, we better not do it tonight because it's a really important game for us. You know, maybe maybe you sign a decent player in the summer and everyone goes quiet again. These protests to me, I've said it for a while, I do get a feeling they will die and they will fall away. And tonight was a prime example okay. of where people just felt that they were, you know, winning this game was more of a priority than getting rid of the Cronkies. And, uh, and I think that will continue. We've got some super chats I've got to do here before they disappear. Malik says, I think it's time to seriously evaluate Arsenal as a big six club. Bring Leicester in and I second Villa getting a seat on the terrace. That is another big question, actually. I, I want to go to everybody for a quick answer on this rather than a, uh, a statement. I'll, I'll start with Neeks. Should Arsenal still, still be considered a big six club? Honestly, I think the big six itself should be abolished. It's an irrelevant title that holds no weight because we've had we got plenty of clubs time and time again breaking into the top six. How about so yourself? They should not be okay. there. Everybody, everybody agree with that, or should it exist and should they be out of it? I don't think I'm it gonna, should exist. Uh, I've never believed in it in the first place. There's truly only a top four. There is no big six. This big six is a myth. It doesn't make sense. It's, there's only, in my opinion, been a top. And even even saying a top four doesn't make sense because City just came in in the sense of 10 years. If we're going to talk, when you talk about big six and you talk about legacy, and I'm talking about other sports too, where it's like you have the Lakers and you have the Celtics, that's it really. You know what I mean? Like you don't, United and Liverpool, City, Chelsea, cool. But at one point, Liverpool is going to be bad again. I know it. They're going to be outside of the top four at some point. They're out of the top four this year. So yes, I agree with Neef. There is no big six. It's realistically a top four and it's a top four when you finish in the top four. Plain and simple, because we call uh, out of it too. I better, change, I better change the concept of the channel. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, it's a simple answer. The answer to the question is just no, though. No. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. The answer is not. You know why? You know why it's important? Because people like, they use a stat. Oh, Bruno Fernandes does nothing against a big six because he didn't score against 10th place Arsenal. Yeah, he scores two against Everton. He scores against Leicester. He scores against West Ham. It's like, are we judging? Are we saying he's bad against the big sides because Arsenal have won 13 Premier Leagues? Or has he oh, done well against the best sides in I've the league? I've got to interject. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I've got, got to interject. Go ahead, go ahead. Forget about Arsenal. Talk about your rivals. What has he done against your main rivals? Forget Everton. Your rivals, Everton. bro. Your no, Arsenal. No, no. No, no. You see, he's now you're trying to back. Now you're trying to back your point. Okay, now, okay. Say, oh. so, so in terms of what he's done against our main rivals, if, if I think Bruno Fernandez this season, he scored a very decisive penalty in an important win over Manchester City. He had a brilliant performance, scored a goal, and set up a goal uh, 
Uh, we drew in the end because of Tuanzebe against Leicester City, who have been the third best team in the league this year. In terms of clutch games in, in these semi-finals, Cavani got the goals, but I think he, he, should, have, he should have had a hat-trick tonight of assist as an, as an example. He last season scored... A, a, create a great goal against Manchester City um, as an example. Has he been great against a traditional big six? No. How amazing was he in the game against uh, Everton, who at the time were flying high in the league? He done well. Could he do more? Scored a winning free kick in an FA Cup game in the dying moments against Liverpool. That's just in his first season. Imagine that. Like, some players don't have that in three or four years. So, like, he, he, he's been very good. I've got to go to more Super Chat. So, there's just been so many... Yeah. I want to Sorry, say man. one thing about the traditional big six point. Yeah, go on. The traditional big six point, this came to fruition in a time where Liverpool were out of the top six, in a time where Chelsea were out of the top six. So now that Arsenal are out of the top six, you guys want to bring this up as a joke, say, why are we even talking about this? Because in this time period, over the past 10 years, there's been numerous times where some of the traditional top six have been out of that situation. And just now, you guys want to banter it, but it's fine. Can I count it and then we can move on, please? Can I count it and move on, please? It's about the consistency of how long you've been out of there. The teams that you mentioned were up and down. Sometimes we get fourth, then maybe get fifth. Sometimes we get third, maybe we get sixth. But you guys, for constant five years straight, haven't been it. You know what ah, I mean? Huh? Haven't five been, years. Haven't been it. We, no, 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 no. I'm talking about. I'm, talking I'm about too much. I'm, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about Champions League. I'm talking three? about Champions League. Okay, I'm you're talking I'm about talking Champions about League. top six. If you're talking about top six, you guys are trying to because we've been eighth last year, and this year it seems to be we're going to be outside of the top six again. The but barometer keeps changing. Where's your yep. consistency? Six yeah, but years, but you go. How, no how many of the, out of teams that you listed there? How many of those uh, guys were out of top six? Liverpool have been out of the top six for more than four years uh, in, in the past decade. Are you kidding me? You sure? Uh, no, you not sure? not for what, four years in a row. Yeah, but, not four years in a row. But, exactly. But, but they've won the Champions League and Premier League since then. So they're definitely back mm. in it, if, if it indeed exists. Uh, Egal, I know you've got a shoot off, bro. Um, I think you just said you're, you're, you're on your way, mate. And we'll speak to you soon. Uh, Yami here says, hey, Terry, Chelsea fan here. London is without doubt blue, just like Madrid. Love the streams, by the way, and work you will do. Always a joy to watch. Thank you very much for that compliment. We've got lots more in the pipeline, lots of things being built out for the show and the channel. Uh, so a massive thank you to you. There were loads more super chats. I've missed most of them in terms of getting them on the screen because the comment section is mad. Which Man United Europa League semi-final uh, made you more tense? Tonight's against Roma or Celta Vigo? Celta Vigo. I, I can answer that because it was tight. I know they, they had that flurry where they scored a couple. Should have scored maybe a third or a fourth and it looked edgy and dicey. That's t tonight why Oli didn't play the kids from the beginning because it's such a hard game to actually be in tonight from Man United's point of view because you're through. We have seen one of the greatest teams in Champions League history in AC Milan believe they'd won the final at half time and come out in the second half and just get caught cold, get caught on the jaw. That's what we did a little bit tonight. Uh, in that second half, it was like we came out and there was an element of we're through. It's not a problem. And we got caught cold. We were sleeping. We were just making silly mistakes. You've got Fred trying like quiff turns and pirouettes on the edge of the box rather than clearing his lines. And it led to a sticky moment. They got back in the game. But I didn't feel nervous at all. Like personally, if you, I was like, oh, OK, they, if they scored that third goal. They scored three goals in like three minutes. Then maybe. But they didn't. Uh, Cavani went and got a goal back. It was absolutely fine. Mm. I've got to do the rest of you I've got these other super chats. Sorry, Sonny here says, uh, Scandalous didn't let me finish. Sonny, you had, you had a lot to say, bro. You had a lot to say. Um, <laughs> you kicked everyone out. You told Nix to shut up. You chatted about conceiving babies. You had a lot to say tonight, bro. Um, who else put a super chat in here? Let me finish. Um, been gagged, bro. Sonny, Sonny's on one tonight. Sonny's not a happy guy. Where well, was one more one from Mr. Here? Here's my rebuttal. It says, would Arsenal fans want to get relegated if it meant better owners? Let me ask Kess Facts. that question. You would. You take hey, I've, I've said it since the start of the season. Sometimes you've got to burn it down to go again. And honestly, if it meant three, two, two, two to three years in the championship for the owners to go, I'll take it. Mm. I'll genuinely take it. That's, that's a big one for me. Listen, young Samuel, thanks for coming on and having your say, mate. Top, top man. Thank you very much indeed. Simon says, Terry, if Oli wins the Europa League, it will be what the 
2000, sorry, the 1999 to Don uh, Fergie. Listen, who knows? Who knows what it will spark? What I did love tonight, though, we haven't spoke Man United much tonight. What I did love tonight was how before, before the game, during the game, and after the game, we broke the semi final curse. That is a cast time fact, but still, people were angry. I loved it. I was dying, bro. Remember before yeah. the game, he was like, I don't want to celebrate it. I saw, I saw, I don't want to celebrate tonight. Too strong a start in lineup. If we don't, I saw one guy tweet and said, if we don't batter them four or five nil again tonight, I'm going to be raging with Oli. I just sitting there thinking, people are mad. They've got a syndrome, bro. There's a legitimate syndrome. There's a legitimate syndrome. Yeah. Since we're yeah. talking about the game, it's kind of like certain someone said about not starting the young players, starting off strong. Should be the way to go forward, in it? I got question marks over my head when he's like, KJ doesn't want to start a mad. Oh, the youth. Oh, KJ love youth. Yes, but I can see these things. These are the things I've been talking about. When I said I want my team to be focused, have a strong mentality, and be serious, this is what I meant. Because today's game, the reason why I'm not annoyed, I'm, so I'm not annoyed because I'm, I'm slightly annoyed because we lost. I wanted to win the game. I want to win every game. But what I saw there was a lack of mentality, a lack of seriousness, a lack of wanting to sh put down a marker and show everyone that we're winning this competition, no questions asked. Now, people can ask us questions. Now you can say, oh, but it's because of the scoreline that we were so, were so complacent. But that shouldn't be the case. We should not care about any scoreline. We could be 10-0 up. We should not be conceding the way that we did today. Because it was comical and pathetic the way we see it today. And that's why I'm, that's why I was annoyed at the performance. I'm happy we went through, and I'm very confident against Villarreal. But that performance there is the two the, the, that that tie the two sides of Man United. We want to see that Roma first leg. That's what we want to see. So I want to dovetail off what you're saying there because I, I mean, if we're going to be honest here, complacency was always going to be a thing, um, and this is exactly why the European Super League is what people didn't want. What we saw today is exactly why because you would see so many performances like this where, I'm sorry, I said it early in the game. I'm like, all he's got these men that are pretending like it's a training match. So there was one point I remember when we had we had the ball, we could have hit them on the counter, no problem. Like, And normally we would have. And I think it was Bayer Bruno who turned and passed the ball backwards because they were like, yo, we just need to retain the ball, run around, get a workout in. Nobody cared to win today. And I don't think anybody should be surprised at that because this this happens in North American sports. When you go up 3-1 in a playoff series or 3-3-0, it's always going to end up with you losing one of those games because you don't care. And it's not – this is athletes. It's not like they want to do this. It's human behavior and psychology. You're out there being like, why am I going to bust a gut, run after that ball, possibly pull a hamstring, when they need to score six more goals to knock us out. It's yeah. just a mentality thing. You don't it, care. And I'm not happy about yeah. it, KJ. Yeah. But oh, I, yeah, yeah. I just well, on top of it. I, I, no, I, get it, I get it. But I want my players and my team to be elite. And to become elite, those are the things that you need to oh, pick I, I do. I do get that. I think what's also in the back of their minds as well is the fact that they've got to play four games in a week. And there was an element tonight where I was looking at players and why would they bust the gut? When they've got like they've got to play on Sunday, and then they've got to play on Tuesday, and then they've got to play on Thursday, it's an absolute disgrace that they've, they've crammed. There's no game, by the way, on the Saturday after that Thursday game. There's no game on the Saturday. You could just play the game on the Saturday and give Man United no, a bit of rest. No, no, no. No, see, see what they should have done because Liverpool are playing West Brom on the weekend. Oh, well, they, sorry. What, they, what they should have done because it would have been us on against Leicester, but it's the FA Cup. They should have moved Liverpool's game to the midweek with West Brom. And then we play Liverpool on the weekend. I mean, that would have just solved everything. Yeah, and this time, and, and you know what? There's no excuse. It isn't like fans have booked tickets and hotels and travel because there are no fans. It it is. So I think I think all these things. That, look, I'm just I'm like you, KJ. I was disappointed with the performance of the team tonight. I got, I was frustrated. It, it, I don't ever like losing because it counts as a loss on the on on the block mm -hmm. on the sheet. But if we would have beaten Roma four two last week. I don't think you'd have seen that complacency. Oh, no, 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 we, we wouldn't. I, have, we wouldn't have. I, I, that that I will that I will say. I don't think we would have been this bad if it was three two or two two or something like that. That we wouldn't yeah. have been. But just because it wasn't that, you need to show your mentality and being serious. And that's and that's all I want. I, again, I just want my team to be elite and to become elite. Those things need to get put out of your mind, and you need to be professional at all times. Now it, it's very true, and I want to ask United boys this question. Villarreal, most of us, I wanted Arsenal because I prefer to roll the dice because I wanted to be the team to end their season. It's not going to happen now. Villarreal, we should 
be uh, yes, they play a good low block. You know, we know Pau Torres is a good defender. Their goalkeeper looks as, looks as dodgy as a nine pound note. We should, it does. We, we should be beating them in the final, should we? I'm not saying we should be complacent. We should disregard them, but we should go into this as heavy favourites, right, Nick's? Listen, I mean, if we if we dare lose this game, if we like, the only way we lose this game is if something happens like Sevilla, where we just miss chance after chance after chance after chance. But that banks on the goalkeeper having a, a worldie, and as you saw, that guy he, he couldn't catch a cold. He's Awful. The man's coming for every cross that's not there, punching balls into his own players' um heads. Like he's he's little the Jimmy awful. Yeah, yeah. Do you know do you know where do you know what country he's from? No Argentina. idea. He's from Argentina. Guess who's the number one for Argentina is? R- Romero. No, not him. Gonna... He <laughs> plays first team football, <laughs> and Romero still goes number one over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know his first name's Geronimo. It makes sense. It makes sense. My grandma was coming out to my was screaming to run him over. He was awful. Yeah, we, he was awful. We should be favourites to this. And listen, people I'll, keep I'll... saying the stat in, in the chat. We got we got a terrible record against Spanish sides. I get it. Cool. But we've what? beaten Granada and um, Granada, and we've beaten Real Sociedad on the way to we, winning. So. We played three Spanish sides this whole tournament. In the, the third one. Yeah, yeah. It'd be the third one. And, Granada, and is, Real Sociedad, and. Um, it will be even if they are. It will okay. be even yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's yeah, and Ollie's record. This is the thing. Historic records are great, but what Fergie Fergie losing to a Spanish team in 1996 is he relevant to what Ollie's going to do this season? Like it doesn't. It literally, Rashford isn't sitting. Oh Jesus Christ! I remember when I was two years old and we lost to this this same Spanish club. I mean, I'm in trouble here. It and, doesn't. And, and that's mind. why. That's why I didn't want Arsenal because I. <laughs> the two reasons. I feared one that they could beat us. Because they've beaten us already this season, Arteta's beaten um, Solsha twice out of three games, mm-hmm. and I don't want to give Arsenal no life. Like if they won today, between now and the end of the season, they'll still be bouncing. They'll still be like, "We got a chance. We got a chance." When they lose on the weekend, they'll be like, "I don't really care anyway." No, I want them to care. I want them to suffer. I don't want any. I don't want to give them nothing. No dice being rolled. Nothing. Sorry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I do. I do hear. I do hear you. I, I'm looking. The thing is now. I'm looking forward to the final. I want to win it. Um, we're, we're going to be back in the Champions League next year, regardless. But I, I, listen, I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the ne- of next season for Oli. I have a feeling that we'll part ways with him. Um, I really do, in one way, shape, or form. But you so, know, if he sorry. can be. Yep. How? Well, one thing. Sorry, no, you're actually, you're actually, you're actually spank them. You're actually spank them without a shadow of that. But there's one thing I wanted to talk about today, and that's Emery, yeah? All of our fans were saying he's not good enough for all this, yeah? But what it showed today is he knows how to organise a team. He does know how to organise a team, and he couldn't do that with, with our team. For me, that shows it, this team is just a personal issue. It's personnel, because... If you look at the way their structure is, if you look at their defenders, they want to defend. They actually defended quite well. In their You'd be in the top six if they everyone's still your coach. They, they, su- they sat down. Yeah, no, we would be in top six. We, we would. But, you know, I, I, I don't understand, man. Oh, man something no, something big has to be changed. Graham, 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 Graham Potter at Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> Graham Potter, so, so, I, I yeah, so, and we and we should be beating them. Just just back to the United point. Man United should be beating them. There there is no doubt about that, um, whatsoever, um, at all. We're gonna go to some more calls now. Sorry, sorry, um, sorry. Did, you, did, you, did you say you think Solskjaer is gonna be sacked next year? Oh yeah, no, sorry. Part of ways. Part of ways. No, and what I mean by that is I don't. I, I wouldn't necessarily say sacked. I know that he's looking at a new deal. I just, I feel like I think we're gonna have a good summer. Um, based, based on the conversation I had today I think we're, we're going to have a good summer and I think that I'm not convinced that he's good enough to win us a Champions League or a Premier League and if next season sort of ends with us and it's finishing third but nowhere near a title race I think the club will look officially he might be sacked but I don't think it will be a sacking in sort of Oli-esque or LVGS I think it will be a, it will be put down like a mutual agreement to move on I just have a feeling that's all but either way I want Oli to pick up this trophy because I think he's done a lot of good for the club he's a club legend and I'd love him to part with a trophy or two by the time he goes regardless if he stays a few more years and we, and we win FA Cups and a Premier League then I'm even happier but I just hope he does it for him because I think the hard work he's put in the professionalism that he's shown at times, the way he's handled, like the Riola Pogba situation, 
is a lesson to even some of the great managers out there in terms of man management. So yeah, I think he, I, I think I, he I, I know, I know it's a prediction in it. So it's not, you're not saying he's going to be sad, but I just think the fact that we're in second, we're in a European final. Yeah. We didn't want to be in the Europa League cool, whatever, but we're in a European final. Why, why? I don't think a, a sacking or him being part in ways, whatever it might be, should even be on the car. Not only on the cards, but even in discussion right now. The man's on, on course to win a European trophy. Like, if this was Tuchel, which he is, if it was Klopp, if it was Pep, if it was Arteta, if it was Lampard with Chelsea, uh, Brendan Rodgers with Leicester, we, nobody would be talking about them potentially losing their job next season. So I just think that because Solskjaer doesn't have the the record that some of the managers that are uh, listed in terms of their history, because he doesn't have that to fall back on, we always fear that something bad is around the corner. But I can only judge him on what he's done at Manchester United. Oh, and I, I, he's got I, better and better each year. So I, I have no... I have, one second, let me finish this, sorry, saying this quickly. I have no reason to believe that with better players... We won't improve next year. If we don't, we don't. It's not. It's not a given. But history suggests we will get better. No, and listen, and, and I hope that we do. I, I, I pray that we do. And it's one of those things. I'm still yet to be convinced that he can win us those major trophies. My point wasn't so much to actually focus on him maybe going. That's just a gut feeling I've got. It's not really based on anything other than my gut. But I'm desperate for him to win this trophy because I would hate for him to leave without one for all the really good things. Um, that I think he's done for us in terms of rebuilding us. We're going to do a few more calls before the end of this ma mammoth stream tonight. Keep hitting like and share buttons over on Give Me Sport and on our channel here on YouTube, The Football Terrace. Next up, uh, we've got Tom backstage. We've got Realist, but we're going to go to Guna Express first. What are you saying, bro? Um, yeah, I've been watching the Roma highlights while I've been waiting to come on. And I'll say this, they showed more fight being 7-2 down at one point in aggregate than Arsenal did today. We were told that it's a creativity issue, yet we played Saka, Pepe, Erdegaard and Smith-Rowe and the Bamiyang, yet we still couldn't even score one goal. That's all we needed was one goal. And we barely even came close, to be totally honest. Arteta, he's not a finished manager because he never even got started. One FA Cup win that was a bit of a fluke, let's be totally honest, isn't... It gives him no credit. It gives him nothing in the bank to, to prove that he's a good enough manager for this level. He never has been. The only reason he got given the job was because he worked on the pep. And to be honest, he should go back there because that's kind of his job. That's that's what he's good at doing is developing young players under a better manager. But being a manager himself, he's nowhere near ready for that. And to throw him into what I genuinely believe is the hardest job in world football right now was so stupid from our board. And to be honest, if the board doesn't sack him, he, he needs to he needs to hand in his resignation because everything is just going to get worse. His you know, status as a manager, again, there isn't one anyway, but his status as a manager will only go down and the only jobs that he'll be lucky to get are championship level. Wow, big, strong words there. I'd love to, I would love to chat a little bit more, bro, but we are running out of time yeah. tonight. Uh, top, top man, thank you so much for waiting so patiently. Big words from him. Jess is now with us. Jess, commiserations, you're out, but you're still smiling. Um, give me your thoughts, please. Good evening. Good evening. I'm only Good here evening. to show my face, you know, so people don't think I'm a punk, you know, so I'm going to show my face. <laughs> yes. I'm show my face. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, after I did my show, I feel a little bit better. I got my emotions out because I wasn't completely confident in this game. I think you guys know that, you know, I wasn't thinking like it was going to be man. super easy. So, no, you're not going to see that. I'm not going to let you guys <laughs> bug me like that. But, um. I mean, if we were a well-run club, Arteta would be gone by the mar by tomorrow. He would. We would already be on the phone with a new manager. But we know that that's not the truth. You know, he's mm -hmm. he'll be here. And at this point, it's just I don't really know where we go from here. Outside of Europe is some is scary to me because we could be out for a long time. We we thought we'd be out of Champions League for a year. We've been out for five years, so it's a slippery slope. Um, I was pretty. I think the damage was done, I think, in that first leg. You know, even though we, we changed up the lineup and all that, just the energy didn't change, nothing changed. And it's just pathetic. You know, it's just pathetic. And um, 
I don't know what Arteta does from here. I think he's completely out of his depth. It's been obvious for a long time. Thomas Party doesn't become a crap player overnight. And nobody's in form. That, that's definitely down to the manager. So unless he learns how to be a top manager in five months, he'll be out of the job. Like, he'll be out of the job. He's not learning from his mistakes. And it's just a shame. But, you know, I, I see him being sacked by, by December after they barely back him and he continues to make the same mistakes. So, yeah. I, I hear you on. I, I hear you on. I, 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 I completely. I think you're absolutely spot on with everything uh, that you said there, Jess. I don't want to uh, draw you through any more pain. Uh, we'll keep you in the <laughs> draw second. Draw, right here, bro. Draw. No, I, I, I like Jess. It's not happening. It's not happening on my watch tonight. Uh, Tom's with us. Tom's a Liverpool fan. Uh, you're in the <laughs> Arsenal are in the mud. How you feeling, mate? Well, I've just got to say something to David first. Calling Thomas Parse the gone name Adam Alana is an Ill insult to Adam Alana himself. <laughs> that is disgraceful. Adam Alana performed in the Europa League semi final. Thank you very much. But, you know, the thing is, Arsess is out of his depth, isn't he? But Ar Arsenal themselves, that always have backed themselves into a corner by investing so much money in them. You spent 40 million on Parse, however much on Gabriel. You you put how much money in William's back pocket? You can't back out of the experiments on him because he's invested too much. Parse tonight, disgraceful. Gunasaurus was sacrificed for that. I'd rather have him on the pitch. I'd rather have him in the midfield. Arteta's trying to play that Arsenal team like Man City when his players are Birmingham City level, <laughs> Championship level at the time. And then in this post-match interview, I think Arteta said having to play Kieran Tierney threw off the bounds of the team and we were really unsettled for the first half. Because Granny Jack would have ran left-back, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> the world-class left-back he is. And real quickly, on the um, Aston Villa comparison, um, I was thinking about it before. You've got any Martinez is better. Cash is a better right-back. You've got a better centre-back pairing. Two better midfielders than McGinn and Louise. Grealish is better. And Watkins is better. But Arsenal are better than Aston Villa. That wasn't what was said. That wasn't what was said. Yeah. Yeah. That was not what was said. Yeah, we're talking about, we're talking about club stature and size of club and all that kind of nonsense. But you are right, though. You are, I'm going to say that the Brother Boys are better than Arsenal. <laughs> Imagine, in, again, so, so they sold their best goalkeeper. Why? Because he wanted first-team football. Because the, the guy wanted first-team football. Have you seen that guy in goal? That guy in goal is so bad. Oh, listen, he saw Leno. He, saw, he, he got his chance in the in the Arsenal team and looked at Leno like, "You man are picking him, him over me." Now I'm cutting. Yeah. I'm cutting. They didn't I'm pick him though. So this is, not, this is what I mean though. He wasn't picked. Leno wasn't picked over Martinez. Like, get your facts right. He wasn't picked over Martinez. It was either you sell um, Martinez to raise money to get party, and this is what I mean about being cheapskates. Because you're selling your, one of your best assets to weaken where you are in, in the keeper position to then add to midfield. Like, how does that work? And then strengthen a team who should be nowhere near you. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> uh, Sun Sunny here says it's so easy to bash Arteta plastic. Bro, you were on and you spent your time talking about having babies and stuff, bruv. Like, you could have spoke about that. The link is still open. You could have called back a long time ago. Uh, I really appreciate the super chats on my brother uh, and everything else. I, I'm gonna, I am going to go... Um, to the final caller uh, who's backstage realist. I can't leave him hanging. He's been waiting a long time. What are you saying, my guy? Listen, to... Terry, oh, it, was, there, it, was, yeah. it was expected. Yeah. yeah, it was expected. You knew it was going to happen. I, I said to everyone last night, mates, I said to in Discord, I said it was going to happen. We were going to lose. And to be honest, I see people using Cronky as a, I wouldn't say an excuse, but to pay for all for what Arteta has done for this season. I understand it, but it's it's not the way. Kroenke doesn't pick this first 11. He doesn't lose 13 plus games. Plus, the plus is because we have four games remaining. He could lose all of them. I don't really care because I have no emotional attachment to them. But it's, it's Arteta is becoming a problem. He is. Whether you like it or not, Arteta isn't good enough for using the way, to be honest. And in all honesty, if 
if Kroenke does say if Kroenke does stay, I can see us going down in about five years' time. To be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, wow, I mean, can you ima- can you imagine the? I know not everyone agrees with 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 the thought of Arsenal going down, but you know, strangest things on this planet have happened. I mean, it would would we then say you're out of the big six? I don't know. Maybe it, it, it's uh, uh, you know, Igal will still fight the fact that they're still are. <laughs> you know, Igal would in the, in the down there because- championship. With Rotherham and Wickham and that man there, Arsenal was still... Hang on a minute. Hang on. If we go down and man like uh, Aaron's channel go up, Donny versus Arsenal, bro. We do a preview. We do a preview. The guy will have the perfect argument. Arsenal's won a championship trophy. Where's everyone else's? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Arsenal are not getting relegated. Really Anytime soon, they're not. A comment here says, I'm a Chelsea fan and been watching football for the last yes. 20 years. This was the worst performance I've seen from an English team in Europe. When Tottenham lost, whatever they lost, when they lost to yeah. Zagreb, that yeah, was freaking yeah. worse. So. Nah, you lost 10 2 to Bayern Munich. We yeah, lost 15 3 over <laughs> one and a half years. That's. Mm. That's the come on. Let's, let's. But, did, uh, but didn't didn't Bayern also give you a pamin as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but come on, <laughs> in a half year, glass houses, year. David, David. We glass own houses. Bayern, yeah. fam. We own that. Yeah, let's be honest. Glass London houses. is red. London is red because Bayern wear red. Let's just. It, yeah. it also it also depends on how good the opposition was. You know, if you lose to somebody who's so beneath you, you know that's worse. You know, you lose to Bayern Munich. They're the bet. They're bet- way better team than Arsenal, so I don't feel any type of way about that. Lose to Dinamo Zagreb with Bale and Kane and Son. You're yeah, that's worse. Actually, and, actually, and, and there, the there's a the worse one. And the manager and the manager in prison as well. You could say Arsenal <laughs> Ostersons. Boy, Arsenal Arsenal well, that, 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 that was a bit mad. Still, not even lying. Graham Potter to your game. I, I think the, wor- the worst one for me, Baku, is a final. And Come on! <laughs> really? yeah, that was that, it's a final. It's a final. It all, it's always worse. Like generally, when you get knocked out in earlier rounds, it does get forgotten about. Mm. Normally, by the end of the season, but losing the final in that way, especially again, social media is to blame for this. But with the gas, the yeah. Arsenal fans went into that. They were. I remember. I, I'm only quoting troops here because I do watch a lot of his content. I remember him laughing in Carefree Lewis's face, like. It was this, I don't know, like it was like going to be it like... Was a it, was, it, was, it was the turmoil. It wasn't on the internet then. Well, it, was the, it was the turmoil of the Chelsea team that was yeah. like a couple of days before. Like all these stories came out about that players was falling out. Sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Like all these different things. And then you got Arsenal fans are like, yeah, you see our team, they're hugging, they're happy. We're going to destroy them. Just for them to get pam four. Okay, one. KJ, on top of that, on top of that, Remember, Chelsea were already in Champions League. Arsenal needed the win. Chelsea didn't need it, you know. Chelsea didn't need it. Chelsea said, you know what? We'll take that. We'll take that. You're not getting Champions League. Oh, Absolutely. Man. Listen, everyone that has tuned in to us this evening, uh, a massive thank you to each and every single one of you. Uh, uh, Sonny is calling. <laughs> yeah, no, dis- no, no discrimination here, fam. Uh, yes, I don't mind. I don't no, mind. he's talking about us. He said, we're giggling girls. Not yeah, yeah, everyone yeah, but yeah. He's talking about oh. us. Yes, he's talking about us guy uh he's not better <laughs> hit that like button hit that share button we're back with you tomorrow with more content i don't quite know what we're covering yet but we're doing some stuff kendall's back tomorrow evening as well for our all female podcast until then thank you take care goodbye god bless from everybody here at the football terrace and